Hello and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And today we're going to be reviewing Next Station Paris. This is the third game in the Next Station series by Blue Orange. Mm -hmm. First one, Guardians of the Galaxy. Second one, Avengers Endgame. Third, Next Station Paris. Clearly a winner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm going to show you how this one plays. Uh, I'm going to give you... I'll try to give you a quicker overview of it because it's the third. You can watch uh, Tokyo or London if you want to see a more thorough explanation. But uh, here we go. Here's what comes inside of Next Station Paris. These cards over here are optional modules, which I'll explain later. Now, this is also the third game in the Next Station line, so I've explained the game twice before, uh, so I won't go into great detail. But this is basically a flip and write game. Each round, you're going to be using a different colored pencil. I can be the purple player, another player to my left can be using the green pencil, the third player can be using the blue pencil, and a fourth player can be using the orange pencil. You'll go through most of this deck of cards, uh, connecting out new railways to the purple station, for example, here. When we're done with this, all players will pass pencils to their left, and then play another round, uh, drawing out more connections to the new colored station, so on and so forth. So on a turn, you will flip over a card. Let's say that I'm starting with orange here, and I'll have to connect it to a triangle stop somewhere. So I can connect this right here, for example, and then we'll flip over another card, and then this one here says I can connect to a square anywhere, so I could choose to go this away, and I'm trying to do several different things here. You're trying to score by connecting a lot of stops within one sector. You can see these yellow lines here that show one little district, so you're going to multiply the number of circles that you've connected to in a district, your, your most, times the number of different districts that you've crossed into. So for example, with this one here, if I connected this way, you see I've crossed this yellow line and now in two districts. So right now, I have three in this district times two districts. And as we continue on and so forth, we will be able to connect to more districts, have a lot more connections, we multiply that. That's the basic game. And then you score for also, as rounds continue, if you're able to connect multiple stops to different, or if you're able to connect a stop to multiple subway lines, you get points for having two, three, or four different subway lines, the different colors connecting to each stop. There are the basic rules of the game. Now, what's different in this version compared to the last three? Well, on this card here, this shows the wild card, or the wild symbol. You can connect to any symbol that you would like. However, if you connect to this new feature, these flower-looking spaces here, not only do you get to connect to that, but then you get to do another connection as well, straight from it. These spaces here with the little flowers are considered wild, so you could connect them with any color symbol, but if you use a wild card to connect to the wild space, you get an extra route that you get to draw. So that's one difference. The other thing is you'll notice these little hatches over here, which are crossings. So if you go through this crossing, normally in the previous Next Station games, uh, a route could not go through uh, and cannot cross another um, what do you call it? another drawn line. But in this case, because this is a designated crossing, I could continue the blue line from here across to here because this is a designated crossing where lines can, uh, for the first time in the series, cross. Not only that, but you get two points for each one that you've gone through once, and you'll get six points for each one that you've gone through twice. The other differences over here, there are objectives. You'll play with two of these each game. So connect to six of these wild spots or have two completed crossings, have a single line connect across seven districts, uh, so on and so forth. This is the new mechanism here as well, where you can randomize, and you can choose to play with these or not, where you can designate a bonus power to this top right corner. You can designate a bonus power to this top left, bottom left, and bottom right corner. So anytime that a player connects to here, they get to activate this bonus. Double uh, one of the values of a stop, one of the circles. Basically increase your multiplier, either by stops or by districts. You, if you connect up here, you can then immediately do two more drawings. If you connect over here, you can do the last little mechanism of the game, which is that you can branch off from a path. So if I were to work on the blue line and flip this one over, I could then choose to connect branching off this way. And now I have three different stops that the blue line has. This one allows you to do that by connecting to the station here. The last feature that's unique to this map is that there's a center space here. This is a big stadium because of the 2024 uh, Olympics in Paris. So this is any symbol can allow you to connect to it. 
it is a huge one and it has a lot of exits and entrances, some of which are kind of actually hard to uh, visualize, but it has a lot of exits. It counts as its own district for multiplying scoring, and it's a very easy way that you can try to get four routes connected to the same spot. So that's most of the differences, really. Uh, this game is going to, you're going to score up. Whoever has the most points wins. You can play solo against a target score, uh, as shown on the back here. That's, that's the basics of Next Station Paris and what's different about this one. All right, so I think one of the main visual differences for me is that big bat, that big arena in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because all the games I feel like have had those connection bonuses um, where you get more points for connecting more colored routes to the areas, but then that big bonus in the middle um, is just so much easier to get to because there's like, I don't know, how many sides are there? Like 15? <laughs> Yeah, there's a ton of entry points to it. Yeah. So you're like, oh, yeah, got it. This one is kind of the loosest, easiest map because yeah. a big stadium right in the middle with connections every which way. If you're, you know what I mean, you're, you're less likely to get trapped yes. by your own route in this game because of the crossings and mm -hmm. because of that big stadium. You're like, oh, I don't know where to go. I just go to the stadium because it'll open up most of the rest of the map for you. Right. I find it interesting that doing the crossings and doing the wild areas, those little like flower looking spaces, I'm honestly surprised that those are worth points because they just seem beneficial. They are. You know what I mean? I would, I will notice, I, I will note that on the back of the rule book here, there is the solo scoring guide mm -hmm. for you, right? So oh, if you're playing solo, which I've played this solo a lot. Um, you know, your highest target range is 181 points higher, right? If you're between 161 to 180, well, you know what I mean? It gives you those tiers. Mm -hmm. um, 181 is the highest of the three. So I think basically comparing just game to game, this is the one that's easiest to score the most points. Okay. Because you have the wild space, you mm -hmm. have the stadium that, you know, makes the multiplying easier, all those things. Yeah. But it's also easier for everyone, so that's fine. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, it's power creep. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, and I don't oh, mean course. that. It's just, it was one of those that when I was learning the rules, I was really surprised that I was like, oh, they benefit me and they give me points. I think that's a positive. It is a positive. Well, it's, yeah. it's fun too, though, because you can use any card to connect to those flower spaces or wait to get the, the special wild card that gives you a second route. Yeah. But then also you're using that in lieu of something else that you want. So the game keeps a good sense of tension, even though it's the loosest map, you're still like maximize how do i do it yeah there's still definitely those moments um and i like the way that the powers are in the corner that's just a, it feels different than the original like i feel like i really have to fight for those powers mm -hmm. and make them a point i already like the corners because they increase your multiplier because they're new districts yeah um, but then to be able to have to decide like okay which ones do i want to focus on because i'm probably not going to get all four and if I do get all four, I may not be doing other stuff, right? So it's it's an interesting decision of like looking at those powers and going, hmm, which ones are the sweetest? Which ones do I want to focus on this game? <laughs> One other little difference, small note. Uh, this rule book is a stapled rule book as opposed to the previous two, which had kind of the, the fold out thing, which I get it's cute. It looks like a subway brochure, but it's also kind of aggravating to use. Yeah. Kids yeah. these days are not how to fold maps, man. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> now, so of the three games, like I said, this is, I think, the loosest. You can score the most points. There's, like, you know, most kind of little flexibility. Every special module, like the corners module, you can also throw that into any of the previous two games if you have it. You can use the specials, like the moving powers with the pencils from the original game, mm -hmm. in this one. I like that this is a cohesive line of games. Do you need yeah. to own all three? No. Probably not. Will I... Yeah, because I like this line that much. I gave the last well, two games nines. I think the thing, too, is that it, it feels like just different maps. Mm -hmm. like it's almost feel like expansion packs for the basics, but there's just so little to this box that you don't need to... It doesn't need to be an expansion. It just is its own, you Might know? Might as well be a standalone. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah, so rating-wise, how would you come down on this one? Um, I'm coming in as an eight with this one. Um, I think that it does a lot of the same stuff as before, so it's not quite that seal of excellence, but I still very much enjoy it. I'm going to play it. Um, and especially because it's on Board Game Arena, that's a pretty sweet thing. That is. It's true. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I'm giving this one a nine, just like I give the other two in the series, right? Because they are that similar, but it's not so similar that it drags it down for me. I like the fact that they're different. I will say, I was talking with Z, and I, I hope it's okay to, to uh, invoke his name here, but he played this as the first one of the three. 
And he felt that there were some real complications to it that felt kind of out of place, like the flower. And you know what I mean? Like some of those extra rules that if you've played the previous two and you jump into this one, you're like, ooh, fresh new rules. If you're jumping in for this one as the first one, it might feel like there's some almost unnecessary complications. Okay. But I think if you're familiar with... I, if you're jumping into the series, I think get London. Even though it's the simplest, it has mm-hmm. the fewest bells and whistles, the best entry point is the purest entry point. Yeah. I would recommend this one second, and then actually Tokyo third, even though that was the second one that You know what's out. funny? I feel the same way. Okay. I feel the same way, yeah. This one um, feels very open and easy to do stuff because you don't get tied in, mm-hmm. but it does have those little, like, few extra things that feel more like an expanded game. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Tokyo definitely feels like the the heaviest of them all. Even though the they're not heavy. Yeah, 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 they're not heavy. But, like, it just feels like a little bit more to it. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that's our thoughts on Next Station Paris. High score of a 9, giving this one a seal of excellence. You know, great way to cap off the trilogy. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's more, I don't know. But I'm happy with what we've got. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. Go ride a train and fold a map. Hey, folks, thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you like our videos, if you like our channel, you would love to game with us at one of our conventions. Check out Dice Tower Cruise, Dice Tower East, and Dice Tower West. Fantastic conventions where we play games with wonderful people, a humongous library, and lots of other events and stuff. Also, don't forget to check out our channel, like, and subscribe. I'm Tom Bassel.